Coop here. First down. Dylan Sampson upset about being told he can't pass block. I won't tell you who asked that question, but he might have red hair. So I ask, does it bother him? Does it irk you that people say you can't pass block? And yeah, it bothered him. It was obvious. That's a good thing. It should bother him. And I do agree with him that it's become a talking point, Caleb, that it's probably not 100% his fault at times. I know he's had some whiffs. But there have been other times where he's probably been blamed publicly that it wasn't his fault. So, yes, he's defensive about it, and he's ready to battle about it. I think that's the perfect response. I mean, if I were him, I think the better response would have been, I'm upset that I've given people the perception that I can't pass block because it's not our fault for saying he can't pass block. We all have eyes, okay? This would be like Shaq saying, I hate that people say I can't hit free throws. Well, we watched you not be able to hit free throws. So right. what are we supposed to say? So I knew the second half of what I said you'd have an issue with, which is just that, that he acknowledged them. So you don't you have a bit of an issue with that, but you gotta have an issue with at least he's aware of it and mad about it, not like I'm just there have been running backs that said I'm gonna do my running back thing and do the best I can and pass pro and you're gonna get used to it. Yeah. And I'm not so sure that Dylan Sampson's not that guy. He just doesn't like the perception of not be of being that guy. Oh, okay. I'm just saying I I have People say size. I saw a major unwillingness to block his first two years. I, okay, I, I well, did not see that's a problem. That's that's big time. If it's a technique issue, which let's face it, that they're not the most difficult techniques in the world in reads, but they they should not be that. Uh, so let's get to second down. What down, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. Thank you, Coop. Nico Ia Maleava is having trouble keeping on weight. That was my takeaway. And I wrote about it. I think he is, if you look at his frame, he doesn't have a big upper body as far as his his shoulder width, his girth, so to speak. So I think that that is going to be an issue for him. However, um, he, he needs to be at 220, 225. The body can continue to mature, Caleb, and fill out. I think they call it the freshman 10 if you don't work out. but he is going to put on some more weight. The fact that he's around the 213-ish range is, I think, a little bit disconcerting because you can expect, most guys that are hard gainers can expect to lose weight during the season. So that's slightly concerning. Yeah, that's a big issue. Um, And also one of the things that's part of this is that um, given the tempo that hypo runs with his offense, it's really hard to keep the weight on because you're constantly moving on just on Saturdays, Monday through Wednesday at the hard practices too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you are, I mean, it, it's like, it's like the difficulty of trying to get a, ba- a guard in basketball to put on weight when they're constantly running full court. Okay. It's, it's, it's very difficult and it is disconcerting. I will say that I think the tackles for Tennessee are very good this year. John Campbell and Lance Hurd. I we we know what we think about Cooper Mace. So he should be well protected if but, uh, that issue at running back notwithstanding. But that issue at running back does create more concerns. So I do think it's disconcerting. This is one of the biggest reasons I think they kept him on the bench last year is they wanted him to go through conditioning to get to the to get his body to where it needed to be. Put it this way, 213 sure as heck is better than 190. Uh, yes, 213 is better than 190. That's about where he came in. So, And again, he is a the, – the, the issue is if he were 6'3", we'd be fine with the size, right? But you stand next to the guys I did yesterday, he's a legit 6'6". So to be 213-ish at 6'6", is still pretty slim. But I think Tennessee can handle that. Other takeaways from SEC Media Day. I'm sorry. Tennessee's Media Day. What down, Coop? Tennessee center Cooper Mays here. Third down. Uh, I believe Jeremiah T. Lander and Ricky Gibson are the breakout stars, especially defensively on this team. And here's why I think that, because they brought them to Media Day. 
Nobody requested Ricky Gibson, to my knowledge. Nobody would have requested Jeremiah, Jeremiah Tlander, but they did. Uh, young guys who are largely unproven, I believe they are your next guys that you're going to consider buying a jersey for. Yes, I agree. And we saw signs of this all all season for different reasons. Ricky Gibson stepped in down, down the stretch of the season to become a starter at cornerback. It was going to be down to him or Jordan Matthews. It was it became him. It seems like they're all in on him for this year, and I, I'm not shocked by that. T. Lander kind of emerged actually during spring camp. Eli, for those who don't remember last year, Keenan Peeling went down for the season. Elijah Herring stepped in at middle linebacker and did as well as he could, but just didn't have lateral quickness to be able to play middle linebacker. Towards the end of the season, T. Lander started to get a few more of those reps. Then spring camp happened. They were both involved, and Elijah Herring hit the tra- hit uh, hit the transfer portal. There was a reason for that. The reason was Jeremiah T. Lander. So, I think they're very high. Those are two. One of the things that they stand out with Dave is a lot of Tennessee's players are, you know, highly touted freshmen or highly touted recruits. Arian Carter, Boo Carter, transfers, or experienced players who came in under Jeremy Pruitt. Jeremiah T. Lander and Ricky Gibson are. I think Josh Hype will take those are guys that Josh Hype will take pride in because he can bring them out to say, hey, look at player development. These aren't five stars that I signed, but now they're ready to play and be effective. Along those lines, if you're trying to wag the dog, so to speak, you're definitely bringing a defensive back, right? Oh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> like, Absolutely. So you go in the defensive back room. Who graded the best in the last workout? Oh, you did? Okay, then we're going to go with you. Dylan says, I've been saying T-Lander, uh, or saying since the spring game, that T-Lander is going to have to make his case, is going to make his case to start if Peely goes down again. He's not going to make his case. I, he's going to start. Yeah, I don't think there's a case to be made, Dylan. I'm going to take it a step further. I think he's your starter because they don't want to put Arian Carter there because it was proof within like two drives that he was an outside linebacker. If you notice, they tried him for a second. Arian couldn't play and is gone. I don't think there's any question. Now, I, Jeremiah Tlander is your backup uh, middle linebacker. I, I and I and I believe that's what what was said, guys. I I don't want you to think I read too much and who they make available to the media, but it's a factor. It's a big factor. And I know Bill Martin is a smart guy. He puts a lot of names out there, guys. There's a reason that Ricky Gibson was out there. He's going to be a starter. Okay, so he's going to start. T Lander is an injury away from starting and maybe even, although we think it's a hundred percent the mic, don't we? Maybe even he's an injury away from starting that outside because he knows the linebacker position. I'm just throwing that out there. I think it's pure Mike, but I'm throwing it out there. There is no question in my mind that Bill Martin, go, he's a Tennessee sports information director. He goes to Josh Heupel and he says, I would like to take these guys out there. What do you think? And Josh Heupel looks at one and goes, he's not going to be a factor this year. We don't need to take him. He's going to be a factor. He's going to be a factor. Well, the two that were a factor were T. Lander and, and Ricky Gibson. They'll be a factor this fall. Yes, and when Tim Banks actually does his base 4-3 alignment, which he never does. No one ever does that anymore with nickel. But every now and then, like the main base alignment is the nickel. But every now and then, they will put three linebackers out there. T. Lander is always going to be that third linebacker. And also, there will be rotations. Arian Carter is going to need a breather, and Keenan Peel is going to be a bre- need a breather at times. Guess who's going to step in? Jeremiah T. Lander. Yeah, T. Lander is going to be your Sam every time you put a Sam out there, even though you don't do that really anymore. Um, but I think he's going to be your Sam every time. Uh, other uh, takeaways from uh, Tennessee's media days, and I think this one's exciting because – Tennessee has had some really good tight ends, but special tight end physically, this guy fits the mold. And I'm going to go way back of a Dustin Moore, who I was asked about. Uh, Dustin Moore, one of the most talented tight ends that I've ever seen that unfortunately had off the field issues. Not the case with Ethan Davis, though, as he's garnered his head coach's uh, thoughts. What down, Cooper? All SEC center Cooper Mays here, fourth down. A good point by Dylan. Uh, T. Lander has been a menace on the special teams as well. Quickest way to get some legitimate playing time. Good point. Um, Ethan Davis received a shout out from Josh Heupel. How big is that? Four downs today. 
brought to you by our good friend T. Scott Jones at Banks and Jones. Well, it's because they're Tennessee's trial attorney. You can play to win with Banks and Jones because they'll go to trial. You've heard of other lawyers. They say they'll go to trial and fight for you. They won't. They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks and Jones led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? Banks and Jones, T. Scott Jones, banksandjones.com. What about Ethan Davis getting a shout out at the tight end position? A talented basketball player type tight end that is going to be very good athletically. He just needed to get a little bit bigger and stronger and learn the position. But he gets a shout out from Josh Heupel. How big is that, Caleb? I thought that was huge. Josh Heupel does not give random individual shout outs that often. He's very cagey. Now, to be fair, he was asked about the tight ends, but let's be honest, Dave. He was asked about the tight ends. Typical Josh Hyde were like, great, great group of young guys, developed, you know, real fast, athletic, uh, going to be good, and called it a day. He leads with a lot of new faces, a young face in Ethan Davis, and then spent the whole time talking about Ethan Davis when he was asked about the tight ends as a whole. Leads me to believe – Ethan Davis is going to be a major weapon for Tennessee this year. I think he's going to rely heavily on Ethan Davis to be a weapon in the passing game because Josh Heupel doesn't usually say things like that. That was the only real un that was the only real volunteered player player he volunteered to mention. Yes. You know what I think the key for Ethan Davis is is What's that? by the end of September, I think we'll know if he's going to be a factor because he will have had an opportunity to play against two lower level opponents and get his feet wet and feel comfortable. Right. Right. And then you'll have an opportunity to see how he re reacts against a, a big opponent on the road in Oklahoma. At that point, I think you'll have a pretty good idea at the end of September if you need to go his direction and play him more and more, or you need to go the Stays and Kitzelman direction at tight end to try to get through the year. Uh, because I'm not sure that Ethan Davis is prepared to take that step. A lot of times when you're a basketball star and you have to make the move to a football star, there's a year of learning how to get tough. There's a year of learning how to become a better football player by knowing the playbook. So I'm not convinced he's ready, Caleb, but we'll know by the end of September. Yeah, and the, the biggest difference with basketball and football that people don't realize is um, – your chest mass, you want to use that as an advantage in basketball, whereas in football, you really try to – you you prefer a more narrow frame if you're in the passing game, right, if you're a pass catcher. Yes. Did you use chest mass? I think that's the first time we've used chest mass. Yes, I did. I did. Put it this way. Like, people say, like, could LeBron play tight end? No. LeBron's ribs would get broken if he, call it, if he played tight end because his, his chest is just so large. You know what I mean? And um, I used to say that, like, could Michael Jordan play wide receiver? But no, Michael Jordan's chest is too large. Ethan Davis, um, with basketball, you kind of, particularly with the way you play defense, you kind of want to extend your chest mass, if if that makes sense. And yes, I made it. I made up the word, but I like I, I like the new word. Uh, it's right up there with hand size and soft commit, and some of the other words that we've made up in sports over the years. Yeah, there we go. Chest mass. Um, if he doesn't really learn how to protect it and narrow it, he's going to get whacked at the line of scrimmage every time, right? Yes. And so I think that's the one thing you got to worry about transitioning from football to from basketball to football. But Heupel touting him tells me that Heupel's high on him. And Heupel hasn't really had a tight end that he like made an integral part of his passing game since he was Missouri's offensive coordinator. Well, we had a couple of guys tell themselves. We had Dylan Sampson say that the, all the pass protection is not my fault. We had Nico Ia Maliava talk about how year two was his year. And somebody gave me a hard time about pronouncing his name slow. I like pronouncing his name. I think it's a fun name to pronounce.